Welcome to the Creative Pen Podcast. I'm Joanna Penn, thriller author and creative entrepreneur, bringing you interviews, inspiration and information on writing, publishing options and marketing ideas for your book. You can find the episode show notes, your free author blueprint and lots more information at thecreativepen.com and that's pen with a double N. And here's the show. Hello creatives, I'm Joanna Penn and this is episode number 744 of the podcast and it is Saturday the 30th of March 2024 as I record this. In today's show, I have a solo episode on different ways to market your book. Now there are many options for book marketing, so how do you choose the right ones for you? I give my thoughts on the different polarities on the marketing scale to help you figure out what might work for your book, your stage on the author journey and your lifestyle. That is coming up in the main section and it is a rewritten chapter from my author blueprint. In writing and publishing things, if you'd like a bundle of useful ebooks for authors, check out the latest Story Bundle, which looks awesome. It includes researching history for fantasy authors, a, a book in hand, which is about optimizing for in person direct sales, so live events and things like that, the new edition of Playing the Short Game on short fiction, Kickstarter for authors, and also Make Me Read It Why an Editor Wants to Buy a Story, Fear of Success, and more. That you can find that at storybundle.com forward slash writing. I'm I don't have a book in this, but I already bought the bundle. It looks so good. So that's storybundle.com forward slash writing. I also want to mention the Tim Ferriss podcast this week. Tim had a great discussion with Seth Godin on his show. It is quite short and to the point, (laughs) which Tim's interviews aren't usually. Uh, I don't listen to the Tim Ferriss podcast all the time, um, but I love Seth Godin and this was a really great interview. On something I've been thinking about, which is we are authors, we write books, so we're really good at writing a lot of words. You know, it's we, we write 20,000, 50,000, 100,000, 150,000 word books. But we struggle to write a sales description or a shareable pithy quote, or as Seth does, write a short blog post that gives people things to think about. And Tim, who has written some really, really massive books, also had the same problem. He wanted to talk about how do you essentially write short. Um, So how to write short, not long, and how to write questions, not answers, and make the reader think. So don't provide everything. And uh, I love the discussion because I totally relate to Tim's sort of questioning here because I definitely am in the writing longer camp. A few other things in the interview. Seth also talks about being a character when he writes, the character of Seth Godin, which is something I have talked about before, and uh, but it's something we all need to consider. And I think it might actually help those of you who struggle to put yourself out there. So for example, I am the character of Joanna Penn here now. While this is me, human me, it's not all of me you're not getting 100% of Joanna Penn authenticity. You're getting the facet that is appropriate for the Creative Pen and the Creative Pen podcast. I present that facet to you here. Now, JF Penn is another facet. And obviously, as a wife here at home to Jonathan, I'm a different person. As a daughter with my mum, my dad, um, as a sister to my siblings, I'm a different person. As a friend with different people, I'm, I'm different. And this is so important. I feel like, yes, authenticity is important, but you don't have to be all of yourself. Uh, also, you know, I have bad days and I I share sometimes with you about how I'm feeling, but it's not regularly. (laughs) I mainly keep this show upbeat and positive. That's part of my character of Joanna Penn. So I thought I'd mention that because Seth talks about it and it's also really important for us. And if if you're thinking about marketing, as we go into this later in the, the show, You don't have to bring your entire life into your book marketing, but you do have to bring something. So consider the facets that you want to show uh, to the world. I also like a quote from Seth who said, life is projects, it's not a job. 
And that's actually how I work as well. So each book is a project for me. I don't write every day. Um, I, gen- I I research, I do a lot of research and reading, and then I binge write. I'll binge write for a bit. I've been binge writing on Spear of Destiny, although I've been doing the research for that for quite a, a while. Then I edit, publish, market, and run the business. When a project is done, it is done. <laughs> I think a lot of authors are this way, which is why it's so hard to revisit old work because new work is far more exciting. And in fact, I have already started another project, uh, which I don't normally do, but I just got too excited on this new project. I'll talk about it at another point. Seth also mentioned how he is using Claude 3 and I was kind of gobsmacked because Tim hadn't heard of it. And Uh, My friend Jay Thorne reminded me this week that uh, we're ahead. We are ahead of most people, but I didn't think I would be ahead of Tim Ferriss. (laughs) To be fair, I thought he was quite a tech bro, but clearly not. Um, Turns out I'm more of a tech bro than Tim Ferriss because I got on Claude 3 the day it came out. (laughs) So um, Seth mentioned that he's using Claude 3 and thinks it's the best AI tool out there at the moment as I'm recording this at the end of March 2024. And it can write excellent sales descriptions, which I'll come back on. You can access Claude 3. It is a paid model. It's 20 US dollars a month at claude.ai or through po.com. So that's claude, C-L-A-U-D-E dot A-I or po.com, P-O-E dot com, because it's not available in every country, but you can access it through po. I've been using the Opus model, which is excellent. So have a listen to the Seth Godin discussion with Tim Ferriss. That is on the Tim Ferriss podcast uh, from the 20th of March, 2024. Links in the show notes. In AI news, and still with Claude, actually, Amazon has just invested a whole load more money with Anthropic, who make it, um, bringing their investment to $4 billion. They note in the press release... The work Amazon and Anthropic are doing together to bring the most advanced generative artificial intelligence, generative AI technologies to customers worldwide is only beginning. The Claude 3 family of models demonstrate advanced intelligence, near human levels of responsiveness, improved steerability and accuracy and new vision capabilities. Industry benchmarks show that Claude 3 Opus, the most intelligent of the model family, has set a new standard, outperforming other models available today, including OpenAI's GPT-4, in the areas of reasoning, math and coding. So if you're wondering how to use it or any of the other tools, they have released a prompt library, which will give you ideas on how to to talk with the machine. And uh, seriously, if you haven't tried either the paid version of ChatGPT4 or Claude, um, please do try it because these models are getting better and better all the time. And I think it is much better for you to start trying these things now (laughs) rather than be horribly shocked by the end of the year when obviously they'll be even better. Um, Plus, I am hosting a webinar this week on AI creativity and writing prompts. And we're going to do ChatGPT um, plus Claude with Joseph Michael. And we did this last year before Christmas and people really enjoyed it. So we're doing it again. It is this week as this goes out Thursday, 4th of April at 3 p.m. US Eastern, 8 p.m. UK. If you register, you will get the replay. You can register at thecreativepen.com forward slash April 4. And I'll talk a bit about how I'm using AI tools. Then Joe will demo lots of use cases and ways to prompt and how to do the interaction. And attendees from the last webinar really found it useful. It is a free webinar. Yes, Joe does have a course on how to use these tools, but you don't need to buy it to get a lot out of the webinar. Just come along and join us live. So that's thecreativepen.com forward slash April 4. So in personal news, I have finished (laughs) Sphere of Destiny. woohoo! And I'm pretty happy with it, to be honest. Uh, As ever with writing books, fiction and nonfiction and stories and everything, you have these moments of real doubt that you're ever going to finish, even if you've finished books before, as I obviously have. And it was like, oh, you get these moments and you just go a bit crazy and, and then you break through, something happens and you break through and it's all good. And then you're pretty happy with it for a bit. And of course, the, these things go in cycles. So no doubt I'll get to a point again where I'm like, oh, I'm not so happy with it. But right now I'm pretty happy with it. Now I have already, uh, as I 
mentioned a couple of weeks ago, I'd already printed out and hand edited quite a lot of the chapters. uh, And I've been through all the individual chapters separately, line editing and all of that. Um, But now I'm doing the whole thing. So I've printed out the whole book end to end and I've just started to go through it. And yeah, then it will go to my editor, Kristen. And I'm pretty happy with it, although she always comes back with some great suggestions. The Kickstarter pre-launch page is at jfpen.com forward slash destiny. Now, while I didn't use Claude 3 to write the book, it only just came out a couple of weeks ago. I have used Claude 3 Opus to write my sales description. So, and I wanted to share it with you because this is unedited. So I And I know, and again, uh, you must read the terms and conditions of these models and decide whether or not you are happy feeding your work in. I am completely happy with this. Um, So I, once I finished Spear of Destiny, I uploaded it to Claude and I said, basically, please write a book sales description that make people want to buy. So I'm going to read it to you. A cursed bloodline, an ancient weapon. The fate of the world hangs in the balance. When a mysterious relic is stolen from a museum in Vienna, arcane agents Morgan Sierra and Jake Timber embark on a deadly race against time to recover the legendary Spear of Destiny, the holy lance that pierced the side of Christ. As they follow clues through Nazi ruins, Tibetan temples and Washington DC's greatest monuments, they uncover a sinister plot that threatens to unleash an unstoppable darkness upon the world. But Morgan also carries a curse in her veins, a shadow placed upon her by the black anchorite that now threatens her niece's life. To save her, Morgan must find the spear and unlock its fabled healing powers but standing in her way is the fanatical Jericho Command and their elite leader, Gabriel, a man both blessed and burdened by strange powers and a mysterious past. From the ashes of World War II to the mystical peaks of Tibet, from ancient crypts to the hallowed halls of the Library of Congress and the Capitol, Morgan and Jake must brave every danger, solve each puzzle and face down enemies both human and demonic in their quest to find the spear before its awesome and terrible power is unleashed. An unputdownable story of supernatural suspense, Spear of Destiny is a roller coaster ride into the dark legends of the past and the shocking evils of the present, with only a cursed relic lying between salvation and damnation. Time is running out and the fate of the world hangs in the balance. Will Morgan and Jake prevail or will the forces of darkness triumph? So I think that's pretty awesome. That is the unedited sales description from Claude 3. (laughs) So given it's $20 a month and if you want to like redo your backlist, which I still intend to do... (laughs) like redo my sales descriptions. Um, Anyway, yes, I think that's great. And coming back to what Seth, I guess Seth's interview with with Tim Ferriss, that's not the kind of writing I guess I'm planning on doing myself. But when it comes to (laughs) getting something to do sales descriptions, boy, that is good. So yes, okay. And if you fancy Spear of Destiny... (laughs) which sounds pretty good if I do say so myself, you can register for the launch at jfpen.com forward slash destiny. So thanks for all your emails and comments and photos this week. Emma said, love the show and the Patreon extras. I'm out looking for new walks yesterday in the Chilterns and we stumbled upon Penn Woods, Penn with a double N, and the gorgeous village of Penn Street, which has a pretty church and two lovely pubs. My husband said, it's Penn with a double N. (laughs) which made me think of the show. Victoria says, just a quick thank you for all the AI hints, info and inspiration and sent a picture of Fletch. What a beautiful cat sitting with me on the porch as we listen. That's lovely. Yes, you can send me pictures of your pets. (laughs) And Thorne left a comment on the show notes for Matthew J. Holmes on Meta Ads. Terrific conversation. I find the upsurge in direct sales to be so empowering. To me, this is the most exciting shift since indie publishing itself broke the hold traditional publishing had over author careers. I love reaching readers directly. Yep, exciting times indeed. 
So please leave a comment on the podcast show notes at thecreativepen.com or on the YouTube channel at The Creative Pen or email me, send me pictures of where you're listening, joanna at thecreativepen.com. And yes, I'm back on X at The Creative Pen and I will talk about how I'm completely shifting my use of social media. Uh, having thought I might just give it up altogether, I am reshaping it. And I'm going to talk about that another time. But yes, I am on X at The Creative Pen. I love to hear from you. It makes this more of a conversation. Right. So today's show is sponsored by my patrons. And thanks to the 15 new patrons since last week. And thanks to everyone who's been supporting for months and years. You are amazing. If you join the community, you get access to all my backlist videos and audio Q&A covering topics on creativity and AI, business, marketing, craft, mindset, lots and lots of things, as well as access to the monthly Q&A where you can ask your questions, which is basically an extra solo show a month of 45 minutes to an hour. The Patreon is a monthly subscription, the equivalent of a black coffee a month or a couple of coffees if you're feeling generous. So if you get value from this show and you want more, come on over and join more than a thousand authors at patreon.com, p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com forward slash the creative pen. There's also a Patreon app so you can listen to things on your phone uh, and uh, lots of things as I expand that side of what I'm doing. Right, let's get into marketing. Different ways to market your book. I frequently get asked, how do I market my book? But there is no quick and easy answer. No magic bullet. Only various options that you can use at different points along your author journey. There is no right way to market a book, and there are as many ways to reach readers as there are writers. We each use a different combination of what works for us, and most successful authors use varying types of marketing tactics, as well as changing things up over time. You must find what works best for you, for each book and at each stage of your author journey. So instead of giving you a list of book marketing tactics, here are some of the opposite polarities on the marketing scale that, along with your definition of success, will help shape your book promotion choices. Think of each as a continuum. You will move up and down on these scales with every book as your career evolves. You'll use different elements for each launch as well as for long-term sales. Here are some things to consider. Traditional versus indie publishing or being an indie author. Your marketing options vary based on how you publish and how much control you have over the book. If you're traditionally published, you might be assigned a marketing team to help you or at least offered some aspects of book promotion as part of your contract. These might include an email blast, paid ads, deals in a store or supermarket, or help with pitching media for interviews and live events. But unless you are a big name, it's likely that the promotions team will only be available for the launch period. If you want to keep your book selling over the longer term, you will need to do at least some of your own marketing. You won't have control of your pricing, your cover, or the metadata around categories and keywords, and it won't be financially viable to do paid ads, as you won't be able to measure sales and return on investment. This is why most traditionally published authors focus on marketing through PR, literary festivals, live events, relationships with book bloggers and media, as well as trying to build an email list and social media following. Indie authors are responsible for their own marketing from day one, but also have control of pricing, book cover, metadata, and they can measure return on investment with daily sales reporting. As a result, they have more freedom with book marketing and the opportunity to do price promotions, bundling, sales description, category and keyword changes, as well as paid advertising with measurable results. Short term versus long term. New authors with only one book will often focus on short-term sales, 
because they can't yet imagine a future with more books. Short-term sales are fantastic for that initial launch push, but they often cost money and are not sustainable. The spike only lasts as long as you actively market the book or pay for ongoing traffic through advertising. If you want a long-term career as an author, you also need to think about long-term marketing and focus on building a sustainable baseline income, money that comes in from your books consistently every month without you having to pay for it. You need more books on the market, more streams of income, more readers on your email list, and other ways to attract and retain them. That takes time to build, but is worth the investment if you want a long-term career. Most authors combine both kinds. When I do a Kickstarter launch, I have a couple of weeks going all out with marketing actions every day. Emails, social media, paid ads, podcast episodes, content marketing, tapping into my networks and more. But once the campaign is done, I shift to the more evergreen, long-term marketing approach. Income versus brand building. Some marketing activities are about making direct income, whereas others are about brand building. An article in the mainstream media or an interview on a radio show or a podcast with a large audience can be great for building awareness of your author brand and as social proof for your website. Having a book launch party at a swanky location might make the local paper and give you great photos for social media. Starting your own podcast, YouTube channel or social media account and being consistent with posting niche content is a great way to build up a network and get attention over the long term. But these kinds of marketing are more about building awareness of your author brand. They hopefully result in book sales eventually, and of course will do more so if you have calls to action to buy your book, but it will take time. If you want to focus on immediate sales and income, use paid ads to direct traffic directly to a book sales page, measure the return on investment, test new variations and iterate. In terms of cash flow, if you want to receive money in your bank account more quickly, then selling direct can be worthwhile as you are paid within days or even within hours rather than months or years with traditional contracts. Paid versus free. You will always pay for book marketing, but it's your choice to pay with either your money or your time. Paid advertising can include newsletter blasts like BookBub or Bargain Booksy, as well as pay-per-click ads on Amazon or Meta, or hiring a freelancer to help get you media appearances amongst many other options. Do not pay for book reviews or files with email lists or for anything that might compromise your integrity. There are lots of scams out there, so check Writer Beware at writerbeware.blog if you have concerns or ask in one of the established author groups online. I use Amazon ads for some non-fiction books and meta ads to my Shopify store for some fiction – as well as newsletter blast services alongside content marketing. Content marketing involves providing something for free that attracts your target reader, usually in return for an email address. Some of those people might buy other books and services from you. I started my website thecreativepen.com in 2008 and this podcast in 2009 and apart from hosting fees, they cost time rather than money. And in fact, they make me money. (laughs) Thank you for your support. (laughs) For my non-fiction books for authors as Joanna Penn, content marketing includes this weekly show, The Creative Pen Podcast, as well as articles on thecreativepen.com, videos on the YouTube channel and the author Blueprint. I also do interviews on other podcasts and I have profiles on social media. And although I have pulled away from a lot of time investment in social media, I am rediscovering X as an entirely new platform. I'm treating it as a new platform rather than uh, sort of lamenting the death of the old. More on that another time. 
For my fiction and memoir as J.F. Penn, content marketing includes my perma-free first in series on all stores, Stone of Fire, and my free thriller on sign up at jfpen.com forward slash free. And at the moment, that is Day of the Vikings. I also have the Books and Travel podcast, which, although on a hiatus, (laughs) is evergreen and uh, helps to bring people to my travel memoir, Pilgrimage. Sorry, my award-winning travel memoir, Pilgrimage. I'm also more active on social media with Instagram and Facebook at JF Penn Author, as well as on Pinterest at JF Penn, uh, where I have a board per book. Other authors use social commerce engines like TikTok, creating multiple short videos to attract readers to their books. Investigate the options and find what works for your book and your lifestyle, as any marketing needs to be sustainable if you want to keep selling. The book versus you as the author. Consider how you discover new books as a reader. Perhaps you're at a bookstore or browsing online and a cover catches your eye. Or you delve into the category or genre of books you prefer. Or you search for a particular type of book with keywords. Maybe you see an ad on social media and click through to read more. You don't care who the author is, you know you just want that book. These are examples of book-specific marketing. You need a cover that will catch the eye of the kinds of readers you want to attract. You also need to put it in the right categories and use the right keywords so they can find you. You can also explore paid advertising. Now consider other ways you might discover books. Perhaps you're listening to a podcast or a radio station and you hear an interview with an author and they sound interesting. Or the host recommends a book and you trust them so you go and check it out. Or you follow an interesting person on social media and they have a link to their book in the bio. Or you're at an event and the speaker has a book that sounds worthwhile. Or you're on an author's email list and they have a new release. These are examples of author-specific marketing. Reach that is based around you as a person and more about relationships, networks and trust in your author brand. Again, you will use aspects of both. Standalone versus series. Most non fiction books are standalone, in that you can read the book and you don't need to read anything else to complete the experience. However, you can write books aimed at the same audience, use the same overall branded cover design, and tie them together with a series title, like my Books for Authors, which helps to market them online. In terms of fiction, it's much easier to market a series than a standalone, as you can do price promotions on the first in series and hope to hook readers enough so they continue to read through. I have a couple of standalone fiction books. Risen Gods, a YA dark fantasy set in New Zealand, co-written with Jay Thorne, and Catacomb, a horror novella. They get great reviews, but they are hard to market. Although I am about to pitch Catacomb uh, at a screenwriter's convention, so we'll see how that goes. My arcane action-adventure thrillers are easier to promote, as I have 12 books in the series with more to come. And yes, Spear of Destiny, coming soon. I have a free first-in-series ebook, Stone of Fire, on all platforms, with thousands of reviews, which I can promote with all kinds of marketing, and brings people into the series every day. Exclusive versus wide publishing. If you are exclusive to Amazon with the KDP Select program, then you will have visibility for your ebooks in Kindle Unlimited, KU. KU has readers who will borrow, binge read, and return ebooks and audiobooks within that ecosystem. You are paid for pages read, and you can access KU-specific marketing options like countdown deals and free days, as well as gain visibility in certain lists. However, if you're exclusive to Amazon, you miss out on the audience of readers who buy and borrow elsewhere, including in libraries. Nor can you sell direct or take advantage of other marketing opportunities for at least those formats. 
I choose to publish wide, which means I sell my books in all formats in as many stores and on as many platforms as I can. I mainly focus on my own Shopify stores and, and Kickstarter, since they bring in the greatest revenue. But I also use various retailers and other platforms as outlined in the self-publishing details, which you can find in the blueprint or also on the creativepen.com forward slash publishing. I use platform-specific, limited-time marketing, like the Kobo Promotions tab or Draft to Digital Promotions. I use these every month to reach readers across the world, as well as offering bundle deals and discount coupons on my own Shopify stores. And just in case you missed what they are, creativepenbooks.com and jfpenbooks.com. Publish fast versus publish slowly. Publishing fast, sometimes called rapid release, is in itself a form of marketing for those who primarily focus on Amazon and Kindle Unlimited, as the algorithm favours new content, which you can amplify with paid ads and promotions, as well as pre-orders to the next in series. However, most authors choose to write and publish over a longer time frame, with a less frequent schedule, using launch promotions and longer-term marketing tactics. This is a more sustainable method and the way I publish. Right to market versus right first, market later. Writing to market bakes the marketing into the book by writing something that will sell because there is already a hungry audience waiting to devour it. This suits authors who can write fast and adapt quickly to new niches as well as authors who read and enjoy a specific genre and thus know it well. Writing to market usually focuses on Amazon and Kindle Unlimited and can work for some authors until the category becomes saturated. At that point, the market becomes harder to sell in and some writers move on to other genres. The other approach is to write what you want to write and figure out the marketing later. Most authors start out writing the book of their heart, the book their muse wants them to write, the book that has been itching for years to be created. They write that book with no thought of marketing and worry about reaching readers later. Many will happily continue in this vein, satisfying artistic needs before marketing considerations. My books as J.F. Penn are all written for the muse. Each project was born from my curiosity and, as I am a discovery writer, I often didn't even know what the book would be until I finished. But sometimes I have written to market. For example, I wrote my books for authors specifically to help others on the author journey for my audience at The Creative Pen and many of you listeners. Neither option is better than the other. What's so fantastic about the creative world we live in now is that there's room for writers of all types. So find the method that works for you and your books. Online versus offline. Global versus local. Offline marketing is anything you do in person. Speaking at a local event or school assembly attending a networking event or talking at a literary festival, book club or library. The benefits of this type of marketing include immediate sales and local brand building, as well as the possibility of becoming part of the community. But offline, local marketing is not scalable. You can only reach people who are physically with you at that moment. You could spend the same time writing an article or short story that could touch thousands online in multiple countries, or do a podcast interview that reaches a global market, or schedule short videos or images on social media within your niche. I spend most of my marketing time and budget online, as it's scalable and an effective use of my time. I focus on a global audience, but I also do some speaking events and writers' festivals every year, so I meet people in person. Introvert versus extrovert. 
Thanks to the book Quiet by Susan Cain, many writers now happily claim their introversion. I'm an introvert, which means I get energy from being alone, and I struggle with large groups, lots of noise and overstimulating environments. I'd rather think than speak, and I'd rather write than talk, and I don't answer the phone unless it's a scheduled call, usually with my mum. I'm INFJ on the Myers-Briggs scale, which is a rare type in the general population, but far more common in the author community. Introverts struggle with in-person marketing, bookstore and live events, as well as sustained periods without alone time, like the classic book tour. But being an introvert can be a superpower for online marketing. We can write and create content alone, attracting an audience online and connecting with readers through social media. Just as an example, I am here in my recording booth alone, reaching you, reaching maybe 20,000 people with this, but yet I am alone. So I think that's pretty cool. Extroverts get their energy from people. So live events in person and online are fun and energising and may be a better way for these authors to market and connect. Digital versus physical products. We can publish our books in different formats ebook and digital audio, and then various kinds of print, like paperback, hardback, large print, or special editions. With digital products, you have more options for price promotions, for example, a limited time free or discounted deal, because there is no ongoing cost of production. Stone of Fire is a perma free ebook on all the ebook stores. Kobo promotions allow discount deals, and I use Chirp Books for occasional discounted audiobook promotions. I also have digital bundles of ebooks and audiobooks at my stores, creativepenbooks.com and jfpenbooks.com, as well as offering discount coupons to my email list subscribers and advanced review teams. There are fewer options for price promotions with print products, as there is a cost to produce every book. So you have to market in different ways and attract readers with things that digital products cannot do. Social media favours beautiful print books, as they look more attractive in TikTok videos, or in Instagram images or Facebook ads. For my Kickstarter campaigns, I produce special hardback editions with colour photos, silk finish cover, metallic foil and ribbons. And I'm investigating sprayed edges and other print-specific options in the future. You can go back and listen to the uh, episode with Alex from Book Vault for more there. I also have spiral-bound workbooks and print bundles for my non-fiction on creativepenbooks.com and I offer bundle deals on both my stores for print. You could also offer signed editions, special merchandise and more. Data-focused versus intuitive marketing. There are two kinds of people. Those who enjoy spreadsheets and data analysis and those who don't. I'm one of the latter, but there are plenty of authors who love using data to drive their marketing, particularly in the paid ads arena. But don't worry, there's room for both kinds. Data-focused marketing involves digging down into the Amazon subcategories, looking for underserved niches, focusing on algorithms, as well as analysing spreadsheets and reports for a higher click-through rate or return on investment. Intuitive marketing is more about doing what feels right for you and your book and trusting that you will attract readers over time. Of course, you have to do some kind of marketing in a sustainable way for the longer term. But this approach is more individual. Back in 2008, when I started out trying to market my first book, I made it onto national TV and into the papers in Australia where I was living at the time. But I didn't enjoy the spotlight and I needed something sustainable I could do from home. I also had no author friends, (laughs) so I started this show, the Creative Pen Podcast, well before podcasting went mainstream. I enjoyed it, so I kept going, even though it took years to grow a listenership. 
Now, this show is the engine of my non-fiction book business, but only because I leaned into my intuition and did something I enjoyed and could sustain for years. And yes, we're at 15 years now of this podcast, which is kind of crazy. I do some paid advertising, but I use Amazon auto ads, which optimise themselves. And I outsource my meta advertising so I don't have to manage the optimization. And you can listen to the last episode with Matthew J. Holmes about that. However, there is some data I focus on, my income and my bank balance. I am a businesswoman as well as an intuitive creative. I highly recommend Dear Writer, Are You Intuitive? by Becca Syme and Susan Biscoff if you're interested in discovering more. Becca and I also, well, we did an interview recently, but the one before that was on intuitive, being an intuitive writer. Links in the show notes. Fiction versus non-fiction. While many kinds of marketing, such as email marketing, paid ads and social media, can work for all books, there are some kinds of marketing that are more effective for fiction versus non-fiction, and vice versa. For my fiction under J.F. Penn, I mostly focus on marketing the first books in my various series, using perma-free and price promotions on e-books and audio, as well as box sets and series bundles and meta-paid ads. I'm also expanding into print special editions and merchandise as part of my Kickstarter campaigns and my store, jfpenbooks.com. For non-fiction, I focus on marketing print and audio with higher priced products, as non-fiction readers are less price sensitive than fiction readers, although I also have the ebooks available. In terms of content marketing... For fiction, I have a free thriller, a free first-in-series book, and plenty of books and stories so readers can find me, as well as limited social media. For non-fiction, my content marketing is mainly this podcast and articles on thecreativepen.com, as well as online interviews, professional speaking, and my series of books. Doing your own marketing versus hiring professionals. There are many people and services you can hire for book marketing, but you need to consider two questions. One, is it worth doing at all? Two, is it worth paying for? For example, is it worth paying someone to run your Amazon ads for you when you can set auto ads running without intervention? Is it worth starting a TikTok channel if you hate watching videos and making videos? Is it worth paying a PR professional to get you interviews in magazines when you're just starting out and you're unsure of your brand? Over the years, I've mainly done my own book marketing, learning new skills, trying things out and pivoting along the way. But I have paid professionals at different times for different things. At the time of recording this, I pay a freelancer to format my podcast transcripts and I have also outsourced meta ads to my store, as I talked about with Matt Holmes in the last show. If you want to hire a professional, be specific about what you want as well as your time frame. For example, run meta ads for three months to the first book in my fantasy series. Or, Pitch media outlets for three months around my non-fiction self-help book on dealing with anxiety. You will also need to specify your budget. If you want help with book marketing, you can hire vetted professionals from the Readsy Marketplace. My affiliate link is thecreativepen.com forward slash Readsy, R-E-E-D-S-Y, or just go to readsy.com. Right. So I've touched on just some of the options for book marketing in this session, but don't worry, you don't have to learn everything all at once or do everything all at once. Think about what might be right for your book, for your personality and your lifestyle, as well as this particular period of time in your author career. Book marketing is not optional. You cannot just publish a book and expect it to sell. 
but you have the choice of what form that marketing takes. Pick something, give it a try, and you can learn more and pivot over time. I hope you found this useful today and this chapter is from my author blueprint available as a free ebook at thecreativepen.com forward slash blueprint and I rewrote it uh, this year in 2024 so it's also in print and large print on creativepenbooks.com and also on Amazon because of those countries where the shipping's a bit much. There are also more marketing strategies in my book, How to Market a Book, which is a few years old now, but the strategies and the mindset side are absolutely still valid. So I'd say it's about 90% uh, still applicable, even as the tools have changed. And if you have already signed up for my email list at thecreativepen.com forward slash blueprint, you should be able to just download the new edition or you can always email me joanna at thecreativepen.com if you are struggling to find it. So I hope you found this useful today and let me know where you sit on those various axes, which side of each of those spectrums. And if you can, if you think about it, it's almost like one of those sound boards. You kind of dial one up and dial the next down and dial the next one up. And there's so many different combinations of things you can choose. So you can always leave a message, uh, leave a comment on the show notes at thecreativepen.com or on the YouTube channel at thecreativepen or email me joanna at thecreativepen.com or on X at the creative pen. So next week, I'm talking to Rachel Heron about trusting the process, both the creative process and also life processes, and that the net will appear if you make the leap. And we also talk about getting unstuck in your book and in your life. In the meantime, happy writing, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening today. I hope you found it helpful. You might also like the backlist episodes and show notes available at thecreativepen.com forward slash podcast. You can also get your free author blueprint at thecreativepen.com forward slash blueprint. If you'd like to connect, you can tweet me at The Creative Pen or find me on Facebook at The Creative Pen. See you next time.